So you've just got yourself a new super macro lens. Maybe it's five times magnification, maybe even 10, and you're looking for something to shoot. Well, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through a fantastic macro photography idea that you can shoot at home. Stick around and I'll get started in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapter Looks and welcome back to another macro photography tutorial where today I'm going to photograph the tip of a ballpoint pen. It's a really common macro subject that you see online, but most people haven't actually tried it in person. And that's because it really does make the most of all of your macro skills. You need a very high magnification to get close enough to see the detail on a ballpoint pen and with a lot of magnification comes a lot of complication. So I'm going to walk you through how I captured these photos using a 10 times macro lens. Let's talk about lenses first of all. What are you going to need in order to get close enough to capture this type of photo? So don't be too alarmed right out of the gate. We're not using all of this today. I've just picked out the 10 times magnification objective from the Lauer Oregon set here. This is a set of uh, well, essentially microscope objectives uh, that go all the way up to 50 times magnification. Like I say, we're not using all of these. We don't need 50 times magnification today. We just need that 10 times magnification, which is the one that I've grabbed out of the box here. So that is a 10 times magnification super macro lens on the front of my Sony a7 III. And that's just going to make use of my camera's um, megapixels, the resolution on the camera. Uh, we want to make the maximum use of our resolution. So that's going to get us really close to the tip of the ballpoint pen. If you don't mind cropping in a little bit, then you don't need quite as much magnification as this. Perhaps this uh, Lauer 2.5 to 5 times magnification lens would be uh, more appropriate. It's certainly a lot more useful for your general macro purposes as well as super macro because it goes down to 2.5 times, but also up to 5 times. The 5 times magnification on this lens is enough to capture the, uh, the tip of a ballpoint pen. It's just going to be quite small in the frame and you might have to do a little bit of cropping, sacrificing some of that resolution. Like I say, I'm using this 10 times lens today and that's going to make the most of the resolution of my camera, uh, but it's also going to make things a little bit more difficult for me because the more magnification you have, the more exaggerated all of the aspects of macro photography become. So we're going to have a very shallow depth of field. We're going to need a lot of light diffusion and working distance will be a bit of a problem. Camera shake and movement will be a bit of a problem. So all of this is going to have to be considered. So with my lens choice covered, I've placed that onto a focus stacking rail. This rail is going to be really important because there's simply not going to be enough of our image in focus at this kind of magnification for anything recognizable to come straight out of the camera. We are going to need to focus stack. So I'm going to be focus stacking manually today and I'm going to be shooting without a tripod. Now, don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean that I'm shooting handheld because that's practically impossible at uh, magnifications like this. But the stability that we require today is not so much uh, stability in the camera, but stability between the subject and the camera. So both the subject and the camera need to be mounted on the same platform. Today, that's just going to be my coffee table, but you might need a more elaborate setup if you're using any of those much higher magnification lenses that come with the Aragon set. So I'm going to place my camera down on the table, put a pen in front of the lens and see what we get initially. So my pen is sat nicely in front of the lens here and it's not perfectly aligned and I'll show you why in just a moment. Um, but for now, my, uh, my macro rail is sat nicely on the table along with 
the macro subject holder, which is holding the pen in these flexible arms. And what's important about the stability of this setup is that they're both on this same surface. So anybody that watches these tutorials regularly knows that this is a, actually a very rickety table and probably not suitable for this type of photography at all. But being that both the subject and the camera are rested on the table, if the table moves, they both move together. If I were to take the, uh, the camera off onto a separate tripod, even the movement of me stepping around the table will, table will uh, be enough to change the shot. So when I, uh, when I mentioned that things aren't properly aligned, it's simply because even the slightest little touch is going to completely ruin the shot. Every tiny little movement is translated to really huge movements in the camera. Uh, so finding the, uh, the position of your shot, finding your composition is actually pretty tricky. And once you're there, you want to try and keep it there. I recommend trying to move around as little as possible. And once you've got your shot, be ready to shoot. So uh, with that in mind, I'm going to uh, kind of ignore the composition just for now because I also need to set up some lighting. And the next problem that we're going to have is this distance between the pen nib and the front of the lens. That's called your working distance, how much space between the subject and the end of the lens that you have to work with. And in macro, that's particularly important because we need to get some lighting into that space. At the moment, that pen nib is all lit from behind because there's a big window over in the distance and it's really not showing any of the detail on the front of the nib. So uh, we want to get some nice lighting onto that ballpoint and be able to see some of the uh, uh, the scratches, the, the ink that's left over on there and all of that really interesting stuff. To do that, we need some front-on lighting and to get front-on lighting, we need some sort of light source that will fit in that tiny little working distance. So as you can see, I've added some lighting to the setup and the scene has completely changed. Uh, this isn't the final uh, iteration of our lighting, but uh, what we have here is the Adaptlux Studio. This is a lighting system built specifically for macro. And this is two of the super bright white lighting arms. These are really ideal for teeny tiny subjects like this because they are the brightest of the arms. And they, uh, they do have a more narrow beam angle, but that's not an issue for this type of shoot because the beam angle is more than enough to cover this entire subject. The next thing that we need to think about is diffusion. Our image is, uh, well, it's a lot brighter and the, the background has now disappeared, but uh, there's a lot of very specular highlights and we don't really want that. We want some nice diffused light to really bring out all of the detail on the front of that pen nib. So when it comes to diffusion, we do actually have some diffusers that just snap onto the ends of the lighting arms, but these are actually still too big to fit in that, uh, well, it's maybe only two centimeters working distance. We want something a little bit more comprehensive that is going to illuminate the entire subject or certainly enough of the subject that we can get some nice soft lighting on the bits that matter. So the way that I'm going to achieve this is something, uh, well, it's a little bit of a hack, but it's also a pretty common way of uh, diffusing light at this kind of magnification. And that is to get some very simple diffusion material in in this case, a little bit of toilet roll and just a single sheet and I'm going to lay it over the front of the lens and the subject. And as you can see straight away, we've got a lot more pleasing light on our subject. All of those harsh highlights have disappeared and it spread out the light on the front of the subject to the point that we can now actually make out some of the blue ink dried on the top of the ballpoint. Now, this isn't the, where things end. We still have two independent light sources here that we can manipulate. And because we're working at such close range, the position of these lights in relation to the diffusion material makes a big difference. If I move this uh, left-hand light around, you can see that it's lighting different parts of the pen just with millimeter movements. Uh, so if I move it further over the front or the top of the ballpoint, you'll see that it, it lights up that, uh, 
curvature of the ball a little bit more. If I move it a little bit closer to the lens and further from the ball point, it lights up a little bit more of the front of the lens. The same for this uh, arm, which is lighting that side part, the further away from the, uh, the ball point that I move it, the more that highlight on the side of the pen moves. Uh, it also makes a difference whether I'm moving closer or further from the diffusion material. See, if I move this light further from the uh, diffusion, uh, the diffused highlight becomes a lot bigger. It's because the light is spreading out more before it hits our diffusion. If I move it a lot closer, we'll get back closer to that really ha uh, harsh highlight that we had before. So uh, you need to play around with the position of your lights until they're in a place that you're really happy with. I actually really like this kind of setup where we've got one light overhead and then one from the side. Of course, you can add up to five light sources here as well, so you can really comprehensively light this, uh, this type of subject from all different directions. So now that we have our lighting in place and our photo is looking pretty good, it's time to start taking some photos. And this is where focus stacking comes in. It's a pretty lengthy process, it has a pretty high failure rate and it does involve some extra software to stack everything together, but if you want to be shooting at this type of magnification, it's absolutely a technique that is worth learning. It is, however, uh, an entire tutorial in and of itself, so I will link up in the top right-hand corner of the screen now to a full tutorial on how to focus stack manually like I'm doing today. There's other types of focus stacking that involve automated rails and uh, there's a lot to be learned there but today I'm just focus stacking manually by moving my camera forward in tiny little increments. Hopefully that's going to give me a fully in focus image once I've processed it through Helicon Focus. Only once you're stacking your photos does it really become clear how important that stacking is for magnifications like this. You go from photos like this with only a microscopic portion of your image in focus to an image like this where all of the detail is revealed and everything is in pinpoint focus. Now that makes it seem really easy but it's really really not. When you're dealing with magnifications factors uh, as high as this every tiny little movement and every change is magnified be that your exposure, your lighting, your diffusion or just the movements around the camera to such an extent that if I place my hands on my table, I can actually see my own heartbeat as it shakes the subject. So that tells you how little movement is actually required in order to change a shot like this. One last little tip for you guys before I go, and that is to make sure to give your pen a little scribble before you start shooting, just to get a bit of ink on that tip. I think it just adds a little bit of extra visual interest. Perhaps you prefer it more, just a nice, clean, shiny pen nib, but uh, I think I prefer a little bit of extra detail coming from that ink. I'd like to know from you guys whether or not you enjoyed today's shoot. Would you do anything differently? And have you shot uh, ballpoint pens in the past? Let me know down in the comments and make sure to hit the like button if you learned something today. Hit the subscribe button for lots more macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration coming in the future. But for now, that is all I've got time for. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.